I'm delighted uh, to introduce to everyone um, filmmaker Connie Lowe, um, whose film we will be watching later tonight. Um, it's, it's a documentary that has generated considerable buzz in Hong Kong um, since it started screening. Um, it's about the, the, the 1967-68 riots in Hong Kong and uh, a very um, <clears throat> a watershed moment in, uh, in Hong Kong's contemporary history. Um, so I'd just like to hand it over to Connie now, um, who, who will say a few words uh, before, before the movie starts screening. Um, and Connie has been uh, involved, actively involved in uh, TV um, broadcasting uh, for over two decades and filmmaking. Um, her career has spanned um, RTHK's uh, TV division, uh, also TVB and ATV. And um, Connie also worked uh, for a while in Canada. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll leave this uh, to Connie now. So I speak in Chinese, OK? So I speak a bit in Chinese, OK? Um, uh, 我們這個影片呢, Venice Archive, 其實是接近五年前開始的. So this film was first uh, begun around five years ago, uh, Vanished Archives. Uh, 我們遇到一班六七的少年犯. And we, we encountered a, a group of uh, young, prisoner. young prisoners. Yes. And then um, I just start to find the archive in the government, uh, which is the government, uh, what's it in English? The one in the Dong Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, ar the archives the archive. office. Yeah. Yes. So at the archives office, I want to search for what I interview for the 1967, the young prisoner. And then I find. After I finished interview them, the archive of their part just missing. Um, because I'm studying the 1967, so I, I start from the very beginning. And I find the majority of the, the document is just empty or just a few pieces into it. And also because we are doing the documentary, we need footage. And I work in the RTHK, ATV, TVB. All my colleagues is taking the footage from the GIS, which is in the film you saw Peter Morse uh, in the 1967. He, he just have a big team uh, filming from day to night. And then the footage is just 21 seconds. 21 seconds of the 1967. Everything has disappeared. We searched for more than 100 keywords. Turned out nine DVDs. And everyone is the same, it's 21 seconds. So this is the beginning of this documentary. And I find it's really something wrong. So I, I just keep silent in, in working in the, in the archive. And three months, I have two uh, assistants to search inside our every document what is missing. And then I borrowed the archive from uh, Gary Jung, which is working for SCMP. Uh, he has a book. Well, after you finish the book, the archive, just put it in the storage. So I, I borrowed the archive from him. So I, I, can, I can see in the, in the UK, so many archives, I can read them, and then compare with the archive in Hong Kong. So the document is missing, maybe because of the archive law, we don't have the archive law. Maybe important part is the government don't want us to see. And then I go back to 1956, which is another riot for three days. But this is all there, because that is from the another side, the right wings. Uh, this is not involved in the, in the people now, situation now, 97. So uh, the document is actually very suspicious. So this is the beginning of a story. And then we, we just find the footage. We, we, we take a long time to buy it from the agency overseas, uh, from US, from Canada, from many places. And people give us the photos, everything. So this is a story for long uh, two hours. It's a 
time night and the witness and then the people from a uh, different background. I have two questions. Uh, one is those first riots, May 11th to 13th. To what extent do you feel that this was the result of a long plan from the Macau emergency? Or was it a communist apparatus in Hong Kong that was very slow to react to increasing anger and labor dis uh, disputes in Hong Kong, and that they feel they had to save their rear end or face uh, return to the mainland and worst? That's the first question. The second question is related. Uh, in the American mission, by the end, and, and my journalist friends all thought that the communists failed miserably to gain public support beyond their own organizations. For anybody tonight who saw this, it probably didn't look that way in the beginning. And so at what point do you think the government turned the tide and, and, and it was becoming clear that in fact the left wing really wasn't gaining support, that this was a diehard operation and not long after the beginning it changed. Actually, we, we met uh, last week, we, we checked for two hours. Okay. Yep. And for, for the 11th May, and I think this is your very important part, but for the interviewees we come across for so many and also the documents, um, the left wing has been studied the whole, I think, in the, um, the labor, the student, everybody go to learn from the Macau. So they learn that and follow and waiting for a chance, not really waiting until the May 11, um, long before that. In April, they started already. So this is what we, we come, we check from the document and also the interviewees. They are all involved. So uh, the interviewees we, we involve is the participants. So your part is uh, in the American Embassy and also the document you come across. So we, we are not the same on the same track. And, and you're talking about like uh, the turning point of the, the whole uh, riot. Quite a long story. Uh, I think the, on the peak is when they uh, get fire on, on the, uh, the U.S. not embassy, uh, Ngoi Ban. Foreign office. Yeah, foreign office in the Beijing. So it is on the peak and then actually come down from the hill from there because it is uh, the biggest mistake. Uh, Joanne and I will say this is a bigger mistake. So all um, there are three guys who is the Wang Lik, uh, Wang Lik Guan Yu. Is the most elevated, they were just turned down from the peak. Uh, it is from the August. Yes. Because we, if we need to take, well, take a long, long time to check about because we speak for two hours last week, right? While during... The, oh. While you were doing all this, you kept in mind, I imagine, the question of why has all this disappeared from the archives? What is your answer now? Why has so much material disappeared? Yeah, actually, Simon Chu has uh, turning around, uh, I think, uh, tried to explain why they all disappeared. Uh, no archive law. So, um, Maybe many important documents, just they don't send it there. Maybe some document they think that it is important before 1997, uh, they, they just take it away. Uh, because they're talking about like uh, for the, uh, maybe they need to uh, bring a part uh, back to the UK, and then the photocopy would left in Hong Kong. But actually, after that, it is not like that. For, for us, we really concerned about the video. How come it, it all disappear? And then we, after this eight months, we stayed there for, for uh, it's the uh, beginning of uh, 21-3.
we spent there from January to August. At the end, I asked the one in charge, why is it disappear? The answer is very funny. It is not on record. We are not taking a recorder like that. Uh, he said that on the 1997, there are some intern who happened in the, in the office. So they are doing the, you know, transfer the beta to DVD. Or maybe, maybe they, they don't know how to do the copying. So this is the answer when, after eight months, they, they feel very nervous, like uh, the crazy, crazy woman who stayed there for such a long time. And then for a few months, I have two assistants to stay there, taking out all the files. And then I take many pictures. Uh, how come a, a very thick, I mean, the document, only a few paper on that. For one reason, like um, one example, like prisoner. Uh, I would expect that the prisoner, we have lots of files, but not really 1967, not the riot prisoner, just like all the others, very minor, very minor criminal records like this. Um, for this year, at the beginning of this year, they, they try to do something because our first interview uh, is published like uh, last December. So the reporter go back there, the Ming Pao, one month later. Certainly, the most important, uh, I mean the document, the file I asked for, is for the prisoner in 1967. Certainly one file put it back. This is the, I, I mean the young prisoner. I didn't, I didn't go back because I, I'm, I'm not sure I can go back anymore. But uh, my team would go back to check out. Uh, it is not the same. It's quite keep changing. And then they take a new catalog for people who go back to search for the directory. Okay, it's one, 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 one question that I start the journey uh, from the very beginning. And when, when the documents like that, when the footage is the disappear, we try to search people who experience in, in that generation from all, of, all walks of life, try to interview them or their families. Quite a long journey. So, um, Connie, I, I just want to ask, um, you've, you've succeeded very much in, in raising uh, public awareness of uh, of this episode of Hong Kong history. Um, it's, it's an event that took place 50 years ago, but the repercussions are still uh, significant and uh, important for Hong Kong. Um, from what I understand, you've held screenings now across Hong Kong. Um, you, you've, uh, you, you've had difficulties trying to get this played in commercial uh, venues. Um, a lot of the um, the owners of these buildings, they, they've not wanted to have anything to do with your documentary, but you've still managed to go out and, uh, and play this, this film in over 70 places, is that correct? Uh, yeah, 970, yeah. Okay, um, how, how has the, the, the general uh, reception been, do you, do you feel, towards this documentary? And, uh, do you feel that you've succeeded in some ways of, of fighting back against this attempt to reverse the verdict on, on the riots by, you know, the leftists that, that are in power now um, and are in positions of power in Hong Kong? Mm, yeah, quite long questions. Um, I try to answer in Chinese so Bonnie can help me. We just left the We've arranged around 70 screenings so far, and at the very beginning, um, it's very difficult. Uh, a lot of organizations actually closed their doors, uh, but after the screening um, at Chinese University of Hong Kong, uh, we've got more receptive attitude from different organizations. Yeah. Um, many people came here. Uh, many people came here, they came here, they came here, they came here. We saw in the hospital, 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 in the
，我哋遇到一啲老人家喺现场会喊嘅，会 break down 嘅。A lot of elderly elderly people actually came. Ah,、uh, many of them were on wheelchairs. Many of them were holding sticks. And ah,、uh, we met、uh, a nurse who took care of a lam lambin. Um, the one、uh, who got burned、uh, when he was driving his car、um, on broadcast drive. Yeah. Um. Uh. They just break down like when they watch it, and then crying, and then tell us their stories. There's so many stories that come back because、uh, in 1967 I was five years old, and then for after I tried,、uh, I I begin this project. One year later, I find the first、uh, location for the first bomb is just opposite to my home, and then I I have no idea about that because my daddy,、uh, I think he's very frightened about that. He's a refugee from China, so he just don't want us to concern nothing about politics. So I didn't know. After one year, I know the first location is just opposite、uh, from my home. I Actually, every day I'm playing on the street. So from from that time, I think that this is so important. Even when、uh, in the Chinese education, they would think that don't let the the second generation like us to know it. It would pay safe. Just tell us don't concern about politics. Just neglect it.、Um, and then there are so many uh, different uh, experiences. Who like in the even in the left wings. Many people would come over, tell us their stories. So we we try、uh, we actually begins the oral history. Another part that many people would tell us their story. We try to keep the record、uh, in our team. Everybody,、uh, somebody、uh, would like to on air. Somebody cannot. We just take the document.、Um, and for James, another question is、um, the people who we interview. Um, some of them is very angry.、Uh, they don't like the version、uh, for this one. Actually,、um, maybe you would you would think that there is、uh, we we don't take our stand. Everybody just share their experience. But、uh, for five years after,、uh, like we start in twenty one two, so it's almost five years now. But Hong Kong is changing so much.、Uh, we're beginning. Uh, when we interview them, they just want us to listen to them, just listen to them, and that is enough. But after the umbrella revolution,、uh, everything is changed.、Um, they have the support from the Zhongnan Ban, the liaison office. liaison office, and then they have the propaganda like、uh, in their side. They have movie, they have books. They they want to turn the riot. Into another, another saying like、um, "want to whitewash it."、Um, it is a revolution that is benefit to the Hong Kong. That is the housing we have education is because of this the movement. From the mainland.、Mm, pardon. Sorry,、um, the the people who actually took part in the riot, who planted the bombs and so on, were they indigenous Hong Kong people, or had they fled from the communists to come to Hong Kong?、Uh, both. 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 Makes, there wasn't any.、Right. Yes, both. I was a teenager in Hong Kong, 1967. I lived through it.、Uh, Do you think 1967 Hong Kong was a colonial colony of Great Britain? As in those days, colonial governments are not very kind to the people. A lot of corruption. Do you think that the the way that the government was run in Hong Kong and how it treated its people had any role at all to play in the riots? Yeah, actually, you you can see how we interview people.、Um, They are labeled being,、uh, I mean, the left wings. The,、um, they are beaten to death in the police station. We find so hard to find them out to interview them.、Um,
for the propaganda, like in the in the Hong Kong government, the colonial government, um, and the emergency law, uh, of course, this is not fair. But for the for the for the paper, for all the newspaper we study for the for for such a long time, is the general public support the government to do that? In in if it is in the eyes of today, um, the violence of the police is of course is too much, but the but the police is is also suited to that, so it's all, all kind of violence and also the lies between all parts. It's really like that. Partly caused the riots. No. How come in 1966 the Star Ferries, another riot, and then the Taikong Manwei, I mean the left left wing paper, just telling everybody calm down. Uh, they didn't participate in any, anything in 1966. How comes a few months later in Macau, it is uh, of course not the same as Macau one two three, and then how comes a few months later, uh, the situation doesn't change. Why is 1966 no left wings, uh, I mean the member, no participants in 1966? That's just the same because of. Uh, uh, just the star ferries uh, raise a little bit of the fear, and then the riot is for two to three days. It's just the same. The situation is, of course, where it was like what Elsie is telling us. Um, he, she is uh, 100 years old, but he remember the old days. How hard is it for people um, who live in that condition? Yes, because you you actually from that generation. It's also a fact that the Hong Kong government changed a lot of its policies after the riots. Housing conditions will improve a lot, and the government spent a lot of money uh, creating, I guess, maybe the right word, a lot of activities for young people to divert their energy. So. Yeah, the Hong Kong Festival. So I, I think that uh, it is not, in my, in my view, it is not the riot, it's not entirely because of political struggles of the leftists. It is also a result of Hong Kong government. That's why the government changed a lot of policies after that. Mm. Okay. Ed, at the back. May I just comment? I think it would be fair to say that after any major issue in any city or any country in the world, governments do tend to change their policies. And if you go back through Hong Kong's history, massive shanty fires on the hillsides, the government changed their policy, and various other things happened during, during, during that uh, history. So I, I, I don't think um, any government never changes anything when there's a major issue in a society. It obviously does push change regardless. Just, yeah. Yeah, um, Ed Chin with the um, FCC. Um, Connie, first of all, is a great documentary. I was wondering, have you ever tried to contact the leftist, like pro-Beijing group to show them this documentary? And uh, what would be, be their reaction if there is a chance? I mean, like, um, as I alluded to early before the film starts, I have a group, a 2047 Hong Kong Monitor. Sometimes I invite these uh, so-called um, light yellow, light blue ribbon people to join the light yellow ribbon people to uh, mingle together. Do you think they would be attracted by this type of documentary? Thank you. Mm. Yes, in our premiere in the University of uh, Chinese University, we have all all kind of people. Uh, they actually come to the screening. Uh, we check a lot. Um, you're talking about, do we have a chance to have screening in Beijing? I don't think so. Because um, I think a few years before, we actually approached CCTV, like um, some of the 
more the footage, like the movie footage. We, we want it to get full. And, and four years before, they say, oh, of course, no problem, no problem, a green light. And then the and then situation just changed. Um, the situation uh, going worse and worse, uh, very difficult to, to have uh, just normal communications. Um, not really, I, I think that is possible for maybe coming future. But actually, the, the people we interview or from the uh, Levings group, they actually joined our premiere in, in the screening. Um, we have been more than 70, so in, in different areas actually, and different topics in different universities. Um, actually, you, you've experienced, uh, possibly not everyone in the audience is aware of this, but you've had some trouble, uh, you, you've had some problems during some of the screenings. Uh, could, could you talk a little bit about that, the, the pressure that you faced? Maybe, maybe they would have high expectation for this year, especially. Uh, for people who experience this, they have the criminal record. They hope that this year will be a turning point, like um, waiting for so long. So maybe their criminal record can be erased or give them a saying because they keep uh, lobbying, doing lots of things like um, in their ways to ask for something like uh, maybe ask for compensation or anything. So they have high hope for, for this year. So we'll be uh, quite disappointed. Uh, for, for this documentary, maybe they, they wish that uh, would be more light on their side. But we just uh, keep a record that maybe they're not satisfied with it. Just like that. Yeah. In, in some of our screening, um, there is one, they, they come, come in without invitation, uh, would be yelling and beating at our screening team. Yeah. Um, uh, this is a team from Tai Kung Bao, uh, which is journalists. Um, it happened like this uh, with our interviewees. So it's on the 23rd of April. Um, actually, it's like that. So I keep receive their message, um, uh, frightening message, for a long time, of course. But maybe they just want to express their anger, like that. But for us, we 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 are doing uh, all kind of records, and then we are doing it in a generous way. So uh, it's maybe don't don't please them, and that's it. Yeah, there, there have been um, a lot of United Front activities, a lot of uh, attempts at intimidation by um, Chinese elements within Hong Kong. We've seen interference in, in Hong Kong's affairs, um, and that's spilling over into your um, documentary. You've, you've almost become uh, embroiled in this struggle in some ways, um, in a very direct way now. Um, do you, do you feel some uh, concerns for your personal safety now, Connie? Um, yes, a bit, of course. But, but there is no, no choice, like uh, what we are telling is the truth. And then the fear is always there. Even the people we interview, even the people in the left side, after the interview, they feel the same. Fear is something uh, communist is really Tickle with. So it's for everybody. Just like the interviewee in Canada, he's a previous underground member. She feel fear also. After the interview, uh, she keep reminding me uh, quickly finish it, quickly let it on air, just like that. So for, for personally, uh, we just want to keep, uh, keep screening as possible. We, we don't know when we stop. Um, because um, we heard about uh, before the 1st July would be more peaceful. Uh, but after that, we don't know. That, that's because of uh, Xi Jinping's uh, visit yes, to yes. Hong Kong. Yeah. They, they don't want to avoid Qingcheng. trouble. This is from Qingcheng last time. 
um, uh, he, he heard from maybe different sources that tell them not to interrupt, not to make so much noise. So maybe after the, uh, the 20 anniversary, maybe changing would be different. But we are just doing screening like in the community center, in church, in, in people, maybe just a small group, maybe in school. So this is screening for us, is educational project. People from different backgrounds, they will give us uh, sharing their experience. And there are many professors, lecturers, it's all there. We just talk about, share our experiences, just like that. This is not the propaganda, not anything like a political movement. There's nothing involved like that. Uh, Jessica. I, I just wonder, Tony, whether you have um, uh, been in contact with um, other historians who work on Hong Kong history um, before 1997. Uh, I, I'm thinking, um, I'm having in mind people like Fran, Frank Welsh or Jason Wordy. Be, these people, they have been working for a very long time on archives in Hong Kong. I wonder whether they might have noticed differences in the content of the archives when they were doing their studies before 97 and when you were doing your studies long after 97. I think that, uh, Steve Tang, so I think that might show the, the, the process of the archive vanishing. Yes, yes, thank you for your reminder. I know Steve. Uh, because w I work for three stations, and then my colleagues is doing the same topic before that. Uh, first, the archive, uh, the footage is all there. They have, they have used it in, in TVB or in ATV and LTHK, no problem. For the document, it's quite hard to compare. Like in your impression, uh, you have what, and we don't have what. Because there are so many, and then they are so broken into places. Uh, for us, our energy is limited. We, we keep uh, check with different people, and then we score check with the what happened, is it real? And then we, we search for the newspaper when we can't find the archive in the Hong Kong, Hong Kong office. So we more depend on the archive we, we find in the UK, it is, which is more, more solid. And then... Thank you. Perhaps you'd permit me a, a comment or two. Uh, I was in the place in uh, 67 uh, and took part in the riots one way or another. Um, whilst m many of the archives have vanished from the government, there are a lot of archives in private hands. Um, uh, they're difficult to get at, but a lot of them have not actually vanished. They are just held in different hands. Um, permit, me, permit me a couple of comments on your film, uh, which I, uh, interested me no end. Um, but I, I think one of the things it does not show is the pressure that frontline Cantonese police officers were under. They were under tremendous pressure, and their families were under tremendous pressure. Uh, and it, the loyalty that, uh, that they showed to the community and to government was amazing. And the second point is, I don't think any documentaries that I've seen accurately, accurately reflect the real situation and the real tension that existed on the border. They concentrate on Shadokok and perhaps an incident at Mankam To. But those incidents, or the, the tension and the problems went on for months. And that the fact that, that the people up there were looking eye to eye at the PLA who were dug in on the hills just overlooking what was going on. That was nerve wracking for people for month after month. The mystery and the unanswered question to me in 67 is triads played a major part in what happened in Hong Kong during the Second World War and during the Japanese occupation. The 56 riots were all about triads. And they certainly played a part in 66. But what were they doing in 67? Why the low profile? What were the deals done there? But thank you very much for an interesting documentary, which I enjoyed. 
uh, the border has lots of stories from from the uh, in the government. I mean the archive. They have files for the borders. They have more stories, uh, which is uh, amazingly comparatively uh, quite a, a few stories there. I pick up the Sato Gong, but uh, I do I do listen to the people who talk about the tension over there, and especially Peter Moss is uh, stationed in the border. Uh, lots of story, and also uh, the police we interview is um, Philip Chang is also talking about the border tension. We know about that. Uh, we have a long version, three hours. This is a two hours version. The, uh, the gentleman at the back. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Connie, for this documentary. Um, as in the interview, you mentioned that after 2014, that is the umbrella uh, uh, movement, that the attitude of those leftist interviewee changed because you said they got some support from the Central Liaison Office. Uh, can you be a little bit more specific on that? Because um, are you sure they really got some support, I mean, from the Central Liaison Office? Because up to today, the official stand of the CCP about 67 is it was an extension of the Cultural Revolution and cultural revolution was wrong on the official stand of the CCP. In that case, the Central Liaison Office have no, should not have the intention to help these people to get the so-called rehabilitation, the ping fa. How come the attitude change? I mean, it is this very uh, inconscious to my understanding of to the official stand of the CCP, including the Central Liaison Office. Thank you. Mm. This is a longer story. Maybe I, I use uh, more time. Uh, Bonnie, help me, okay? Um, I give you a few examples, like the timeline, how it changed. Um, 我們開始的訪問的時候是2011年9月。我們做了一年的訪問是順利的。他們擔心我們,但是他們願意做訪問。We first started the interview in uh, September 2012. And uh, we used about one year to conduct those interviews, and it was very smooth. The last interviewee at that time was uh, Mr. Kwok Hing Lam, uh, an elderly person uh, who is the a leader of the bomb uh, squad at that time. At that time, there was a, a, a preliminary, the first version, uh, which I brought to a Taiwan Film Festival. Uh, for an uh, exchange of ideas. Uh, the film was called um, a, a Fierce Wind and a Strong Fire, uh, 1967. Um, more, more focusing on the young prisoner uh, I interviewed in the first year. And then, um, in before the Occupy uh, Central Movement, um, I was very close with that group of elderly people. And I always went to hospital to uh, visit them because some of them died. And uh, so I had a very close relationship with them back then. 中聯辦邀請這一班被拋棄了幾十年的六七的一班經歷者就去了深圳開集思營,為期三日。Um the Central Liaison Office invited uh, that group of uh, uh, elderly people who were abandoned uh, to Shenzhen for a, like a retreat camp for three days. 那個主題是反思香港的前途,同埋因為佔中了,有外國勢力入侵。the theme uh, about that camp was to review uh, the future uh, uh, destiny of Hong Kong uh, because of uh, there is some uh, foreign um, um, intervention um, regarding the Occupy Central Movement. Okay. 
，整個過程香港嘅撕裂程度，我哋係一種好能夠溝通，到到佢哋一種好唔同嘅狀態。因為我係一種冇左派背景嘅人，佢哋喺當時係有好多人同佢哋一齊做嘅一啲研究啊、拍攝啊、採訪，大部分咧有左派背景嘅。At that time, our relationship、uh, regarding communication with them was still very good. I had no left-wing background, and、uh, we were、uh, discussing and looking at、um, from the、um, Occupy movement to Umbrella Revolution, and、uh, our communication back then was very good. 大家去睇翻當時嘅報導，呢一班六七動力嘅朋友開始出嚟講嘢，同我初初採訪佢哋。好驚見到人係完全兩個樣。Uh, at the uh, uh, when you check the media report back then,、um, that group of、uh, people they came out for、uh, interview, and that was very different from、uh, my first impression with them. At the at, at the beginning, they were very afraid of coming out and to talk to people. 雨傘嘅時候，當然香港好撕裂啦，個個唔需要講。Um, 到到嗰個香港叫做魚蛋魚蛋事件、魚蛋革命、魚蛋暴動諸如此類，大家見到出嚟嘅係明報係頭版，亦都係同一批人譴責暴動。Um, the Umbrella Revolution、um, at that time the society was strongly split, and、uh, when we talk about the、uh, Fishbowl Revolution happened during the Lunar New Year,、uh, you can see from Ming Pao Daily Report.、Um, That group of people came out to condemn the Fishbowl Revolution. 喺同一段時間，誒佢哋做嘅紀錄片各方面咧，係我好我好知道佢哋嘅狀況，因為佢哋一路爭取嘅咧係一個公共嘅支持。首先係左派、工聯會、中聯辦、其他建制嘅人士，佢哋一路做咗好多啲工作，係好正常嘅，因為佢哋需要尋求一個説法。Um, they've been、uh, doing a lot, for example, producing documentary films, and、uh, they wanted to uh, uh, gain support from the public, and、uh, so that's why they have a, a specific、um, idea of、um, explaining the incident. 喺片嘅后边，大家见到喺正中请愿嘅时候，嗰、那个镜头，大家有冇印象？我哋叫公民广场，因为当时有个反国教咧，嗰阵时叫做公民广场。佢哋去請願嘅時候係唔準許行得比較近嘅地方，喺外圍嗰度遞信。Uh, almost near the end of my documentary film, uh, uh, maybe you will remember there's a scene when、uh, that group of people、uh, went to have a protest outside the、uh, civic square of the、um, central government offices, and they were not allowed to stay too close、um, to、um, that main entrance. 我想講由當時到而家，佢哋嘅電影、佢哋嘅活動咧，常常大公報有報導嘅。I wanted to, I want to say that、uh, their activities, their documentary film,、uh, were always mentioned by、uh, Tai Kong Pao。誒，佢哋嘅主要嘅誒、呃、代表人物咧，常常喺建制嘅圈子裏邊咧，係以前冇咁嘅機會嘅。Um, their main、uh, character、um, were Didn't really have、uh, that type of、uh, publicity、uh, or chance being mentioned by the media before. 我今日冇帶 PowerPoint。我平時喺分享嘅時候，我有好多個圖片嚟講嗰個變化。誒，二零一四年嘅誒係周榕誒號召嘅八一七大遊行，建制誒隊伍好長。記唔記得建制隊伍裏邊有南亞裔？都話係同鄉會嗰一個遊行啊 ！I haven't brought along、uh, my PowerPoint, which I usually brought、uh, to screening,、uh, by which I can show、um, more details, especially the timeline、uh, regarding the changes. And、uh, when we talk about 2014,、uh, the 17th of August, there's there was a rally, and、uh, Mr. Chow Yong、uh, was one of the major um, um, participant of that. 誒嗰一六七動力嘅朋友，第一次幾十年之後，第一次被邀請喺建制隊伍裏邊，誒拉住一個佢哋嘅 banner， 好興奮。Um, that was the first time for that group of people、um, who were invited、uh, to participate and hold a banner.、Um, they are very excited.、Um, 
when participating in that 17th of August rally. 六月一號，即係喺幾日之前，同樣嘅一班人喺中央政策組閉門嘅會議上放佢哋嘅紀錄片。Um, the June, uh, the first of June, that is before the um, uh, rally. Um, that group of people were invited to show their documentary film to the Central Policy Unit, the CPU. I mean, a few days before. Oh, sorry, a few days, few days before. before. A few days before. Uh, just a few days before. Uh, uh, 特首所講嘅向前看係喺嗰個誒、uh, 拜山嘅活動之後嘅。Um, what the chief executive said at moving forward, uh, what he said was uh, after. The um, is it the worship sin yeah. that yeah. Um, uh, you saw from the documentary film? That was after. Yeah. 喺同一個時間，中策組呢一個嘅放映活動係同一個時間發生嘅。Ah,、uh, the screening um conducted uh within the central policy unit uh was happened at the same time. 邀請所有嘅全職同非非全職嘅顧問一齊去睇，又對佢哋當事人嚟到講説嗰個情況。誒，雖然佢唔係公開嘅，但係因為喺唔同嘅年代有唔同嘅顧問咧，呢、这個 message 係冚唔住嘅。Um, they invited a full-time and also non-full-time consultants to participate in the CPU screening of that documentary, and this is rare. 所以誒，唔係唔係你見到嘅一個情景一個説法。咁當然誒，嚟、呃、緊會你會見到有好多嘅。電影啊、書籍啊，各方面，包括 magazine 出咗街嘅，都係講緊呢個叫做六七事件，係一個新嘅定性嚟嘅。So it might not be a, a, a one-off、um, or, or a one-off particular scenario. You will be seeing more、um, books, documentaries,、um, talking about、uh, the、um, new definition of、uh, the 1967 riot. 所以可能我只能夠咁樣。我對相對簡單地咁樣答你，係有 timeline， 係有時序，係有台面，係有後邊，係有唔同嘅説法。咁誒係同樣同步進行嘅。嗰、那個祝福係嚟自中聯辦嘅。Maybe I can just simply answer like that.、Uh, there's timeline.、Um, there's something happening、uh, in front of the stage. Something happening at the back. And the blessing is from the central liaison office. Okay.、Um, thank you very much, Connie. And、uh, perhaps we could、uh, give, uh, give give Connie a round of applause for some great work and very important work for Hong Kong.